हेलो दोस्तों वेलकम टू द न्यू सीरीज दिस इज द सीरीज वेर आई एम गोइंग टू टेक अप टॉपिक्स ऑफ द करंट अफेयर्स वॉट एवर द इम्पॉर्टेंट इवेंट्स दट हैपन इन दट पर्टिकुलर वीक आई विल टेक द टॉपिक एंड आई टीज द टॉपिक इन ए कॉम्प्रेंसिव मैनर द इंटेंशन इज नॉट टू पिकअप थिंग्स रैंडमली बट एज वी प्रोसीड यू गेट ए कॉम्प्रहेंसिव वन स्टॉप कवरेज ऑफ द करंट अफेयर्स दिस इज द इंटेंशन प्लीज कीप वॉचिंग द वीडियोज सो लेट स्टार्ट अवर फर्स्ट टॉपिक डीलिमिटेशन कमीशन दिस इज इन द न्यूज वाई इट इज इन द न्यूज यू विल अंडरस्टैंड एज वी फिनिश दिस टॉपिक सी हियर सी हियर फ्रेंड्स बिफोर अंडरस्टैंडिंग डी लिमिटेशन कमीशन यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड दट वी फॉलो द इनडायरेक्ट डेमोक्रेसी इनडायरेक्ट डेमोक्रेसी मीन्स फॉर रिप्रेजेंटिंग अवर पीपल वी सेंड एम पीस एंड एम एल एस एवरी वन नो दिस थिंग MLAs are representing the state legislative M uh, assemblies, and their MPs are representing the Lok Sabha. Right? They are they are representing in the parliament. Okay. Now, uh, the, if there are particular MPs, one MLA or two MLAs or whatever, so the number of MLAs and MPs should represent the equal number of population. Let's say there is a person X MLA and there is a person Y MLA. This X MLA should also represent fifty people, and this Y MLA should also represent fifty people. So the number of people this MLAs are representing should be always same. Same is true with the MPs. If X MP is representing the fifty people, Y MP should also represent fifty people. So there should not be disproportionate. things in between if particular mla is representing 100 people and another person is representing 250 people so there is no concept of democracy there okay uh, so in that case for suppose in one constituency there are 200 people um, one mla is represent 200 people and another constituency only 10 people are being represented by the um, another mla so don't you think there is a disproportionate here so and also the vote the value of the vote also here it is decreasing right here the value of the vote 10 people is able to decide the fate of this mla and here 200 people has to decide so the value of the vote is also changing so in order to not happen this thing so there is a proper demarcation of the boundaries let's say if this is a boundary there should be proper demarcation like this equal demarcation like this so that here okay this mla y mla z mla R M L A, so that there is a proper representation should happen. Now, who is drawing these boundaries? To draw these boundaries, we are appointing delimitation commission. So, this process of drawing boundaries is called the delimitation, and whichever the body is recommending this thing is called delimitation commission. Now, why are we doing this? Because the constitution says this. So, when I say there should be equal representation for the Lok Sabha seats in the MP, it is also mentioned in the constitution under which article? Under the Article eighty two. Same thing is being represented for the. Article one seventy for the state governments. So, guys, you have understood the constitutional status and what is delimitation and what is the delimitation commission. Now, this says after now this should happen. This process should happen after every census because the population is continuously changing. Now, here there can be uh, some two hundred population and here it can be fifty percentage population. Then draw the boundaries again accordingly. So, this process should happen continuously after every. census okay so students oh, i hope these things are clear uh, so after every census like after 1951 there was a delimitation commission then again after 1961 there was a delimitation commission then again after 1971 census there was a delimitation commission but know that students there was no delimitation commission after the 1981 and the 1990 uh, 1991 census why it was not there okay i'll come to that point but before that what is the composition of this delimitation commission the three members will be present in this delimitation commission it will be retired supreme court judge or high court judge and chief election commissioner and the respective state election commissioners and whatever the orders they give okay they have the they they are binding they cannot be questioned in parliament they cannot be changed in the parliament or questioned in any court of the law okay these these are final and these delimitation commission will also uh, recommend which constituencies should be reserved seats For the communities like SC and ST, you guys know under Article three hundred and thirty and three hundred and thirty-two, certain seats are reserved for the SC and ST community. Now, which constituency should be reserved for this ST and which constitution for reserved for the SC community? Who will decide that? Again, delimitation commission will decide that. So these are the two functions of the delimitation commission. Very important, students. Okay, you need to know these functions. You need to know the commission and what is this delimitation and constitutional status. Also, you need to know. See here, Article eighty-one. So um, you need to know. 
uh, and also Article 330 and 32 should be re should be read in line with the Delimitation Act. Whichever the Act is new, that Act should be read in line with the Article 330 and Article 332. Okay. Now again, so it is not just drawing the boundaries. If this is the if this is the entire territory, so it is not just asking to demarcate in this way. It is also saying how many people can be there to represent these people in the Lok Sabha. So after 1971 census, the Legal Education Commission said keep the maximum strength to the 550. Initially, it was not this much. Okay, it was less than 500. So slowly the strength was increased. How the strength was increased? The strength was increased to the Constitutional Amendment Act after the Delimitation Commission gives its order. So after 1971 census, when it was appointed the Delimitation Commission, so it said, let's reserve this strength to the maximum strength to the 550. So current strength is 545, um, uh, but two seats which were used to uh, have the reservation for the Anglo-Indian community were uh, removed. So now the strength becomes 543. I hope these things are clear. So this is the actual process that should be happening after every census. So this kind of this kind of redrawing of the boundary should continuously should keep on happening. Right. But uh, but what has happened uh, after 1976, like I said, the number of seats were uh, fixed. <clears throat> okay, like 550 based on the 1971 census. Uh, then for 20 years, almost for 25 years, the government said we will use the same census um, for the uh, DRD, DRD, DRD limitation purposes. We will not change. The reason is uh, if the more population means more number of seats. So it will not encourage this government to take the population control measures. So they said we will halt this, uh, halt this data. So only the same uh, census data will be used for this delimitation purposes. This is what the government have decided. Uh, so uh, they have decided for 25 years they will not change. But after 25 years they have extended for 25 more years. So after 2026 whichever census will happen that census population they will utilize to redraw the national boundaries. First one redrawing of the not national boundaries I'm sorry. So uh, redrawing of the delimitation. Okay constituencies. So the uh, delimitation of constituencies will happen. And the second thing it will also decide how many seats should be there in the Lok Sabha? The people are saying it can be increased to the 1000 members. But mind you guys, so what happened was in the 2008, so delimitation has happened within the, uh, these 550 was fixed, but these internal boundaries have been changed based on the 2001 census. So overall the seats was fixed. Like say if UP were getting X number of MP seats and Maharashtra were getting Y number of MP seats, it was fixed. But internally within the UP, this boundary demarcations has been changed depending upon the population. Whatever the seat the UP used to get, that was fixed. But within this state government, within the state, the demarcation has been changed. Okay, so that is a point that you need to know. And they used the 2001 census. So that is a very important point that you guys should keep in mind while preparation. And also you need to know the state governments have no role in desiring the borders of the constituencies. So now what are the issues that we are facing? Now the major issue is, the first one is, we are still using 1971 population census okay, uh, to, show, to uh, decide the number of seats in the Lok Sabha, which is currently the maximum strength is 550. That is huge underrepresentation because the population after 1971 has increased a lot. So it is we are going for the underrepresentation. Now, second issue is we, we are going for the next delimitation commission after the 2026, whatever the census that happens. So we go for the delimitation commission based on that. But studies say that currently South India South Indian states have properly taken the population control measures, but North Indian states could not take in population control measures in that manner. So if the seat allocation happens after the recent census, it is said that North Indian states might get more number of seats than the South Indian states. So South Indian states are saying that we are getting punished for following our responsibilities. So the dispute is happening between the North Indian states and South Indian states. So let's see what will happen. So this is the delimitation commission. I hope topic is clear and concept is clear for you guys and i have tried to cover it in a comprehensive manner so if you guys have understood the topic please like share and su subscribe and uh, please share it with your friends and also mention things in the comment box that you are liking thank you guys bye bye
take care we'll meet with another topic soon